because I remember falling into a hole when I finished my degree. I remember it really, really clearly. It was like really shit time trying to find your feet. And I've got a few little nuggets I'll share with you. One is have a goal, set goals. So I've, I've always set goals. So in two years' time, I will have achieved this. In five years' time, I will, and then, you know, so I get to one goal and then I set the next. So I don't overload myself. So always set a goal. So by the end of the year, you will have done whatever that might be. I mean, I think my first one was to get an article in Artist Newsletter. So it wasn't a biggie. It was a little. But set the goal so that you're always working towards something. Because when you're at university, you're always working towards something. And then that disappears. So those are really important. The next little nugget I'll share with you is every rejection you get is one step closer to acceptance. So when you get rejections, it's just a numbers game. And I remember when I first started, I had to get 100 rejections to get one interview. My that ratio for them from interview to getting the actual commission was 1 to 15. So I knew I had to write 100. So every time I got a rejection, I was thinking, great, that's another one. One step closer. So turn that negative of rejections into a positive and just keep on sending them out. Just keep on sending them out because somebody somewhere will like what you do. Um, and even if you don't get, you know, you don't, because nowadays people don't send them back, do they? You don't, get a, you don't always get a letter saying, I regret to inform you. But when you don't get that letter as well, you know you've got it. So just keep moving that forward. Just keep on going because you need to get a lot of rejections before you get that one interview. And then you have to master your interview technique. So then you're going to, you know, fail at a lot of interviews because that in itself is a whole other thing, which we might might talk about applications and how to write them and interviews later in the week at some point if people want because I'm happy to share all of that with you. So that was the next one. So yeah, that was my next little nugget. And then the other one, what I did for earning a living because it took a long time. It, was, it, it took me between three and five years before I was fin financially viable as an artist. So in that time between, I just worked like an idiot. So I used to have a cleaning job. This is just so people know. I had a cleaning job in the morning and, and my colleagues will find this hard to believe, but I used to be at work for six in the morning, which I don't do now. Uh, so I used to clean in the morning from six till 9.30. At 9.30, I'd go to my studio. I'd work in my studio till five o'clock. I'd then go and grab some tea before I went to a horrible factory where I fed tea towels into a dryer uh, for a couple of hours. And then after that shift finished, I'd then either go to the pub where I was working or a chip shop. So I used to work through till 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And that's how I earned my money. Uh, that gave me then, the, they were all jobs that were disposable jobs that I could leave at any moment, should I get a commission. Uh, and then the, day, the time in the middle was studio time and I worked bloody hard in the studio to build up my portfolio. The other thing I realised very, very quickly is don't expect anybody to give you anything. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, why would anybody want you? There's so many of us. And, and I learned very quickly that if you want to do something, do it yourself make it happen. Don't wait for somebody to, you know, to, to like what you're doing. Make that thing happen. So I set up sculpture trails um, and, and symposiums and all kinds of things because I wanted to work. I wanted my art to be not in galleries but in everyday places. So I made those things happen. And when you start to make things happen, then you suddenly become more desirable to other people because not only have you got a body of work that you can show, but you can also say, I did this within this time and I managed this budget in this way. So I started to apply for grants, any kind of grants. I started to ask people for money. Um, uh, and, and also like people that weren't connected to art. So if I wanted to do something in the landscape, I went to the local forestry commission and asked them. So it's like thinking outside of the gallery box, thinking outside of the art system box, really, but just making things happen. So those are my kind of like little nuggets for you, which we can talk about more if people want later on. And that's it. That takes us to the time, doesn't it? Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.